Everybody needs a place to call home. Whether you're Drake, just hold on, going home. Kanye, Jazz City, coming home again. Or even MGK. I'm to find home. But regardless of where you call home, the most important thing is to identify what actually makes a home a home. When we think of an ecosystem, the easiest way to describe it is to break it into two parts. You have the eco, or the ecology, which is the area of biology dealing with the interactions of organisms in their environment, and the system, which is the assemblance of parts and pieces. Ecosystems include a number of different environments, such as oceans, rivers, swamps, and other habitats. Today, we're taking a closer look at an ecosystem that can exist almost anywhere in the world, and anywhere may just include your own backyard. Streams are freshwater ecosystems, which when compared to our oceans, make up a rather small percentage of the water on Earth. They come from a number of different sources, including lakes, rivers, or runoffs from mountains. Streams are generally classified as small channels of water flowing in a particular direction. Similar to groups like Wu-Tang or The Locks, they can be naturally made by nature itself, or even in some cases, man-made, more so like Danny D. Kane or B2K. You have perennial streams, which typically flow year-round, seasonal streams, which typically flow under rainy conditions or from snow and ice melting, as well as streams that are continuous or interrupted by debris. As with all ecosystems, streams are made up of two elements, biotic factors and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are all the living things that exist in the ecosystem and include plants, trees, insects, and other wildlife. Invertebrates such as insects and worms play a critical role in stream ecosystems. Along with algae, they can be eaten by frogs and fish, which are in turn eaten by predators such as birds and snakes, which in turn die and provide nutrients for trees and other plant life, all coming together to form the perfect circle of life. Algae is pretty easy to identify in a stream ecosystem. Various types of algae exist, including microscopic algae, known as phytoplankton, and more visible algae buildup, which can be seen on trees, rocks, or the water surface. Algae growth occurs just like other plant life, through the process of photosynthesis, converting sunlight into energy. These growths serve as the base foundation of the overall complex food chain. I'm gonna show you guys something absolutely amazing. I got my gloves on. I always like to wear gloves when I'm dealing with animals in the wild. One, because your skin has oils on them. So especially for creatures like amphibians, you could actually do harm to them from the chemicals on your hands. And then two, you never know what you're dealing with. So you always wanna make sure you're safe. So check this out. Here, we have a species of frog. Oh. He's jumping, he's jumping. These are one of the most amazing things that you can discover in a freshwater ecosystem. They are amazingly vital to a freshwater ecosystem. One, because they eat uh, invertebrates like insects themselves. And also they are in turn eaten by predators such as birds and snakes. So they're very vital to the whole circle of life. These guys start off their lives as tadpoles in the water and then make their way out to land. And these are absolutely amazing. Not exactly sure what species this is. I'll need a guidebook to really be able to specifically identify this. This is where your iNaturalist app comes into hand. Look at this guy. Absolutely beautiful. How amazing is this? We are talking about biotic factors in freshwater ecosystems like streams. And look what I just came across. How incredible is that? We have a snake that just caught a fish and is attempting to devour it on the side of the stream. This is absolutely incredible. I have yet to see any fish during my exploration here on this freshwater ecosystem. And the very first fish I see is in the mouth of a snake. This is amazing. Well, this fish is about the same size as the snake. So watching it actually attempt to devour it is gonna be incredible. Snakes have the capability of opening their mouths up to 180 degrees to be able to swallow prey that's larger than them. A reptile live in action in a freshwater stream ecosystem. It doesn't get much better than this.
incredible. The other factor of stream ecosystems that's not as easily visible but plays just as critical of a role are the abiotic factors. These include non-living things such as the temperature of the environment, the pH of the water, water clarity, minerals and nutrients, and even precipitation levels. Abiotic factors are important because they serve as the glue that helps keep the entire ecosystem together. Imagine if 2 chains never had a necklace. This whole existence would be futile. What if Quavo was never part of the Migos? Would Offset and Takeoff still garner your attention? What if... Okay, sorry. Going on a tangent. These abiotic factors help dictate the health of an ecosystem and keep the fragile circle of life in balance. One easy abiotic element in a stream that you can test on your own is the pH level. The pH of a stream can tell us the acidity of the water. Using a pH scale, you can dip into the water and analyze your results. The scale that I'm using has nine different water quality tests in addition to the pH. All right, I took three different samples from three different areas of the stream. Based on our water quality reading chart, we show fairly low levels of pH as well as moderate levels in all the other water quality areas, making for a pretty healthy ecosystem. Regardless of your findings, you should never drink water directly from a fresh water source. These scales can tell us the mineral levels of the water, but other elements such as bacteria and parasites can still exist, which can cause liver damage or digestive problems such as diarrhea. Ain't nobody got time for that. Abiotic conditions of a stream can be affected by a number of different elements, including global warming, climate change, or the introduction of invasive species. One minor change, such as higher regional temperatures, can in turn create higher algae blooms, which can have an impact on the nutrient levels, which in turn affect fish and other wildlife. So many factors come together in perfect harmony for an ecosystem like a stream to sustain itself. Whether it's the droppings of a rodent that provide nutrients for plants to grow, which in turn provide shade over the water, or mountain ice caps that send fresh water flowing in the spring, which in turn creates additional habitats for organisms to reproduce. Freshwater streams make for the perfect home. So next time you hear your favorite song or artist that makes you feel right at home, think of the ecosystems that are home sweet home to a number of different wildlife and fauna. I'm the Hip Hop MD, this is Hip Hop Science. Until we meet in another habitat, Stay curious. Came back to check on our snake friend and um, it's nowhere to be found. So, uh, oh. <laughs> Instead of going tail first, he ended up going head first. He's about halfway done with this fish, which is absolutely amazing. It can take snakes upwards of hours or even days to consume an entire meal, but uh, we'll check that out on the next adventure. <laughs>